Amen. We're talking about the blessing. And my topic on this sermon is the blessing will change your mind. Yes, yes. The blessing will change your mind. How you think, what you, what you feel about yourself, how you think about yourself, and not even yourself, about other people too. It's a mindset. It's a change. It's a transformation. Right? And you look at transformation as a metamorphosis. And what is a met metamorphosis? A process from immaturity to adulthood. That's it. That's mm. good. Different stages of life. Uh -huh. That regardless of how I age in my body, if my mind don't change, it don't mean nothing. Because if my mind is still at five, and my body is at 40, well, you gonna imagine a four-year-old man crawling on the floor. Okay, it's a mind of a five-year-old. So the spirit of the mind is the word of God. How he thinks, how, how God thinks, and that's his word. But like I said, we're gonna go right into it, because I'm excited. Amen. Amen. All right? We're gonna go to the book of Ephesians chapter four. God is good. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. God is good. Love God. Because when nobody else is there, God is there. Yes, okay. talk about it, talk about it. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. God is with you. Yes. You got to be built on it. Built. Come tell me. Faithful. God. Right? Number 22 to 24, we're going to go. And here begins the reading of God's holy word. Maybe, but we, can we stand for the reading? that ye put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt according to deceitful lust, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Amen. You guys can be seated. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm going to read for that. And it said that regarding your previous way of life, you put off your old self. Completely discard your former nature. And before you enter the blessing, and before the blessing can come and really take a hold of your life, there's an old self that you gotta die to. Because not many have understood the blessing. When you're born, you don't even know what the blessing is, really. What takes the blessing for the blessing to come in is an awakening. It's a mindset that must change before the blessing can activate and move in your life. The reason why the world, and it's so hard to stem for the world, because you've been built on the world from young. If you have not been rooted and been taught the word of God, the process from, from, from a child to, to now having a mindset of an adult in the word of God is going to be tough. Because the word is constantly feeding you things through entertainment, through television, through teaching, and the worldly system, the things in school that you learn, but they never teach about the blessing. They teach you how to work hard and you go home tired. But then they never told that the blessing make a rich and added no sorrow. They never said that the blessing will cover you. The blessing should be there. The school don't teach you that. Psychiatrists can't teach you that, right? Because that's the education of the world. But when you step into the kingdom of God, it's a different mindset, a different culture, right? And that mindset has to change in the blessing. And this is a form of nature. Your old self is being corrupted through deceitful desires. Deception of the world. And not only deception of the world, but deception through people. Your mind is connected, you know, they said light minds, you know, thing together, they tend to click. There's certain things and certain people you've been around that have corrupted you. People, friends, whatever it is, whatever it could be and how it is that you've been deceived somehow in your mind. That's why you have to cover your mind in conversation. Yes, conversation is the gateway for deception to creep in. Yes, it is. That's good. Yes, it is. good. That's why certain conversation that's not your business, you should stay out of it. Yes. Because I'm talking. You have to be careful what's being uttered in, in, in the presence of people. Because it's not your concern. And if you don't have the wisdom of God, you cannot minister, you cannot teach, you cannot counsel, you cannot do these things because the word that may come out your mind might kill me. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. And when I say kill me, you kill my mind. That's what Satan did in the garden, but I'll get to that later on. If your mind is left open, then any conversation could creep in. You need to filter things of conversation. 
filter your conversation. If it's stemming away from people, getting out of the presence of people, not everybody deserves your presence. And who deserve your presence might not deserve your presence no more. That's right. Wow. Because it, it, it's about now stemming in the word of God. Your salvation, only you can control your salvation. That's right. You walk out your salvation in fear and trembling. Because nobody can judge you besides God. Amen. Right? Amen. And it says, and be continually renewed in the spirit of your mind, having fresh, untarnished mental and spiritual attitude. The mind is what is called the attitude. Mm -hmm. Right? The attitude you display must start in your mind first. What do you think about the blessing? It's shown through your attitude. What do you think about people? It's shown through your attitude. What you have conversation about is shown through your attitude. Because I can say one thing over here about somebody else over there, and the time you get over there, your attitude is shown the minute you get in the presence of that person. And how is that, and how is that now brought to you through conversation? Through your attitude. Your attitude means everything, right? And it says, untarnished spiritual attitude, and put on the new self, the regenerated and renewed nature, which is the blessing. The mind of the, the blessing comes to restore you and renew you. The blessing comes to make you think differently about how you live, about how you think, about what you do, how you act. The blessing comes to transform your life. The blessing is the transformer that we are seeking, right? Yes. And it says, created in God's image, God-like, in righteousness and holiness of truth, living in a way that expresses God to your gratitude and salvation. So when it says image, right? Image is what? The light of your characteristic, what you show, right? Your expression and what you think about yourself. That's what it expresses, his likeness. It's not to be like God, because there's only one God. We are like him through likeness. And what is your likeness? You portray his traits. Yeah. Yes, God. Likeness doesn't mean that you God, but likeness shows what is God about. Yes, God. Your feature, what you show, that's what likeness is. Express to God your gratitude through your salvation, what he has done for you, what he brought you from. Amen? Amen. Go to Philippians chapter 2. selfishness or empty conceit. What is conceit? Possessive pride. Do factional motives or strife, but with an attitude of humility. Don't do anything if you got pride in you. Yes. Amen. Don't do it because you feel like you have to. Pride is not going to allow you to enjoy what you want to do in life. Or what you want to do for somebody else. If before you do anything, you must be humble and walk in humility. When Jesus died, he didn't walk prideful, said, so let me die for these people. He came with humbleness and humility before he came to the cross. And many of us don't want, don't want to change how we approach people, how we talk to people. We don't want to humble ourselves, but we're quick to judge. Yes. Yes. We're quick to judge something that we don't know nothing about. That's right. that, that Jesus didn't come to judge, but he came to save. Yes, yes. He comes to serve. So why is it that if we go and serve people, counsel people, minister people, we judging them at the same time? Yes, yes, yes. The blessing don't work like that. That's good. That's the good. blessing don't judge you. The blessing don't kill you. The blessing don't mess you up. The blessing don't destroy you. It don't tear you from limb to limb, but it comes to restore you and restore your mind. The Bible said, do not be conformed to this world. We transform the renewing of your mind and what you think. The blessing comes to change what you think, not about yourself, but about other people. That you can have more than enough. That you can achieve anything in life. That's what the blessing is about. But many of us are certain with our prideful mind. Many of us are feeling that we have to do this work that we are that we are in. But if you're not doing the work in humility, then you're doing it in vain. You're doing it with no result happening. 
There's no change that's going to happen in your life. No chance of mention is going to happen in your life. There's no chance of metaphors, metamorphosis. And what I mean, there's no chance of your reaching your potential. There's no way you can reach it. It says, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also in the interests of others. The blessing looked out for us. It's why is it that we can't look out for each other? Yes. If the blessing comes so that we could be a blessing, many of us get the blessing and don't care about the other person next to us. Amen. The minute we hit the jackpot, we run. Yes. We ready to buy an island, a, a yacht, a boat, <laughs> sit down, sipping on lemonade <laughs> with an umbrella. I made it. But you forgetting that one thing, you forgetting about your family back home. Yeah. You forgetting about your friends that need, that's in need at back home. So the blessing is not only just for your for you to, to, to so that you can comprehend for yourself, but your the blessing comes to transform your life and other people's life. Yes. Amen. Because if you're not seeking the blessing for other people, you might not even get the blessing. Yes. God may think twice before He gives you the blessing. He's not just going. He, the blessing not a hand me out that everybody can just get for free, uh -huh. but it's for those that want to utilize it. And, and really utilize what the blessing is for. Amen? Amen. Amen. Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 2, 14. Praise God. But the natural unbelieving man, in 14, I'm reading from the M5, Man does not accept the things, the teaching and revelation of the Spirit of God, for they are foolish and absurd and logical to him. So the blessing, when you talk about the blessing on your job around other people, they might not even understand what you're saying. They say, what is that? The blessing comes to, add, to make you what? Rich and add no sorrow? What is this? I got a million dollars in my bank account. That made me rich. See, they got it twisted. They can't fathom the knowledge of God, the spirit of God, because God thinks on another spectrum. Yes, he, does. he thinks on a higher level than us. He said the Bible says his thoughts are not our, uh, our ways are not his ways. Amen. So we can't, the people, the natural man can't fathom God just like that. It would only take the teaching of the word for them to really break through and have that awakening that they desire. Yeah. It's the awakening that man is waiting for. Because when you are not awakened, you are in darkness. You are in a place of where you don't know nothing but the natural world. Right? Amen. And it says, hold on, I'm sorry. And he's incapable of understanding because they are still discern and appreciate. He is unqualified to do the spiritual. Like I said, he cannot understand the spiritual things. He can't understand the word. And that's why we got to go through teaching. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 3, 18. And it says, we all with unveiled face continually seeing as a mirror the glory of God. And what is unveiled? A removing of covering. Wow. Right? The removing of covering is the place of darkness. When you look, and it says, when you look, when you continually see as seeing as in a mirror the glory of God, which is the blessing, are progressively being transformed into his image. So constantly from day to day, you are not going to get transformation in one day. God, the butterfly don't fly in just one day. When he is in the poop of the cocoon, when he's wrapped up and nobody is seeing the work that's taking place, that's but good. only him, that's the good. thing about it, people want to judge you when you're in your cocoon. Yes, 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 yes that's good. That's good teaching. Good teaching. People want to judge me, they don't see anything. When they don't know, they don't know nothing about you. They don't know what is what experience you are happening in your life. They don't know your thoughts, they don't know your mindset, they don't know what you're suffering from, you don't know what you're going through in life. And people are quick to judge when they see the exterior, but God is gonna come and unveil you and show what's been happening in the inside that's gonna start working on the outside. And people will now see what was happening inside of you. Do not be quick to judge something you don't know nothing about. That's right. Mind your business. Mind your business. 
What's going on in the cocoon? What's going on in the poop? It's between you and God. It's between you. Your progress is between you and God. Yes, you're going to get the teaching for, from, 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 the, from the under the word. But you got to understand your own intimate relationship with God is between you and him. The secret place. That's what the Bible says. Come into the secret place of God. But it's not for everybody to know your business and what's going on in your relationship. See, you got to tell people, mind your business sometimes. That's right. That's right. You don't go around telling what you, what conversation you having with God and what God is doing all the time. The people, the minute that they get new, they want to start spreading their business. That's why you never got nothing because the minute you say something, somebody's seeking to destroy you. That's good teaching. You don't think Satan got ears? That's good. Well, I talked about it earlier that the mind, you got to be careful what you say, your conversation, the conversation that you're having, the conversation you're telling people because that, that other person might have your mind. They might not have the knowledge of God. They have the natural seat of mind. What is it? Gossip and slander. When they hear gossip, they want to end up on Wendy Williams. So I'm telling your business. How you doing? How you doing? I got news. The new, when God want to make news, he will, he, will, he will put you out there. He will exalt you on his own. The blessing will you bring you up on his own. As long as Joseph was in the jailhouse, the blessing brought him out when it was time. Ah, that's good. No longer have you been in your cocoon. It is not yet time. Don't let anybody pressure you. And when it's time, God knows when it's time and the place when for you to come out. Amen. The blessing will hold you until he's ready to reveal you. So why are you every day looking in the mirror? You don't you see the exterior, but what we see is our own mind. So what we think. Yeah, I go in the mirror and I see the green tie, I see the white shirt. What I'm actually seeing is my mind. A reflection of my mind looking back at me. What do I see in my mind? What's in my mind today? What do I need to change in my mind? What do I need to, is, is, do, am I looking uh, to be evolved today? To, feel, to finally free, be free to come out and stop hiding? Because some people will keep you in that, in that place for too long and you miss out on what God is doing. And it says, look, progressively being transformed into his image from one degree of glory to even more of a glory which comes from the Lord who is in the spirit. So it's God that constantly is shaping you and forming you and molding you and putting you together in this time alone with you. Amen? Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17. that is grafted in, in, in joined to him by faith in him as a savior. He is a new creature, right? So when you accept Jesus Christ as, as your savior, you become a new creature. When is a new creature? Reborn and renewed by his Holy Spirit, right? The old things, the previous immoral spiritual condition have passed away. There's an old condition that we have to get rid of before the blessing can manifest. Yes. And like I said, it's through stages that many of us, when we come to God, we think that we're going to get all the riches and all the glory in one day, in one, in one year. But God, even when you accept him and you accept Jesus as Lord, that Jesus is constantly having to do a work to, for, for you to finally get the prize. For you to finally get to see what God is doing. Don't be rushing and trying to get yourself to a standard so people can accept you. Right. Constantly work progressively trying to improve your mind. Develop your mind, develop your own skill, develop the gift that God gave you. Our gift is not to show up, but it's to, for God to get the glory. It's for God to get the praise. And you gotta understand, I'm not getting gift. I'm not looking to see the blessing to boast myself, but I wanna let everybody know what God has done for me. Yes. I wanna let nobody say that God, there's a God that lives. There's a God that has blessed me, and there's a God that will bless you. There's a God that transformed me. He will transform you. We are busy destroying people instead of helping transform people. God is not looking to destroy you. The blessing don't come to destroy you. It don't come to give you um, uh, unrest and sorrow. 
It don't come to keep you down and have his foot on your neck, but the blessings transform your life. What is that? Your mind. Your mind. The blessing of your mind. There's many people out here that think they're going to be poor and broke down in this country forever because they never heard the word about the blessing. They never accepted about the blessing. They, they, they have been in the state of, of, of darkness for too long that when they see the light, they, they, they are scared because you know why? It's something that is new to them. Mm -hmm. Amen. Don't let something new scare you off. Amen. Don't let something that is new that's going to take place and what God is doing scare you off. Yeah, it's something you might know is going to happen. You might know what God is doing, but that's why you got to trust in the Lord and not lean on to your own understanding of God. You can see the thing about it. You're trying to understand God too much, and that's why you get yourself in the world. That's right. That's right. You see in the present. You progressively grow in God. You don't need to tell anybody that you're in your word every day and that you're growing in God and you've been praying at 5 and 6 and 7 o'clock in the morning. You don't need to tell nobody that. Because it gets up. I'm humble that the one, the things that you de do in secret, God will bless you now openly because of what you've done in secret. Yeah. See, it's not about what you're trying to portray that's to right. people. That's but that's why I'm not both I'm humble. I don't need to come and say that I've been studying my word. I study my word to set my truth approved in the word. When I get understanding and revelation, when I become to, to grow in God, that alone shall prove that I've been in the presence of God. I don't need to come out and say, I'm in the presence at this time and that time and this week and for, I've been fasting for days and I've seen the glory of God coming. I don't need to say that. That's what the Pharisees used to do. They used to have a ceremonial washing of their hands to show how holy they've been and everything. Don't let people fool you about how they wash their hands and what they've been saying to you, but you gotta see how the heart is not revealed through consistency of the mind and the attitude of the mind because eventually what is inside will eventually come out. Yes. Yes. What I love about God is that the relationship between me and him. Uh -huh. Right? Between me and him. We're going to get into this. Got one or two more verses, scriptures. Well, I got one more. Look at Genesis 126. I'm going to close with this. It says verse 26 then God said let us father son and the Holy Spirit make man in our image according to our likeness not physical but a spiritual personality and moral likeness and let and let them have complete authority for the over the fish the sea the birds of the air the cattle and the over the entire earth and over everything that creeps and crawl on the earth what is that saying when it says that God God said, let me put the way I am into man. Mm. Let me put how I think into man, my traits into man. And therefore, when I give them dominion, they will handle what I've given them. We are seeking it not to be transformed, but handle the things of God. We are looking to reach the, 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 the accolades and, and earn the, 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 the recognition, but not really developing the character of God in your mind. That God is not going to give you something to destroy. Imagine Adam and, and, and Eve. They didn't have the, they, they had the likeness of God. They were coupled with the glory of God. And that's why God said, since you have my presence on you, have the blessing on you, I can give you now the authority to rule and have dominion over the land. We are trying to have dominion and, and authority over the land with the wrong mindset. We try to take control of territories without changing our mind first. Our likeness is not changing. We are not progressively changing in our heart and in our mind. The blessing wants to come in, but you're telling the blessing, I'm not ready to change yet. You're telling the blessing to hold on just a little bit. I want to continue doing what I want to do. Just give me, a, give me another year. But the blessing, you could have got the blessing a long time ago if you just had decided to change and begin to what? Pick up the image and the likeness of God. That Satan came to destroy the likeness and the image of God. That's what he did in the garden. No longer do you look blessed, but now you look cursed. Right. Because now I changed your mind. I made you think twice about God, think twice about the blessing. Mm -hmm. 
Think twice about who God is to you. So don't let the mind, right, begin to be at hope from other conversations of people. The word will grow your mind, awaken you to the blessing of God. It will grow you, it will nurture you. It will take you by the hand and, and, and constantly work on you. It's not going to give up on you. The blessing cannot give up on you. You can only give up on the blessing. Amen. You said it's too much to earn. It's too much to give up for the blessing. I don't want to change my, the way I speak. I don't want to change the way I act, but I want to get everything as a handout. We can't get the blessing as a handout, but you have to change your mind first. You have to have the mind of the blessing. And you begin to have the mind of the blessing that God can begin to come in and do that work on you. Amen. So far, the scripture. Amen.